Example three. The average weight of a Lifesaver candy is 0.8 grams. George believes that the sugar-free version weighs the same amount. Use his data below and the traditional method when alpha equals 0 0.10. Remember, alpha is the significance level. The traditional method means we'll be using a critical value. Okay, so first thing, we're given that this is the average weight and George believes. So we're talking about an average. What is George claiming? That the weight is the same. So we have equals. This means mu equals 0.8 is the claim. So not often is the null hypothesis the claim, but in this case it is. So when we go to write the alternate hypothesis, we use mu not equal to 0.8. Remember, we use not equal because we don't know that it's less than or greater than. We're just choosing the opposite of what George claims, and equality is what he claims. So it says to use his data. So we're not given any values, um, sample averages. We have to create that ourselves. So from that data, you would plug it into your calculator and get a sample average of 0.79 grams for the weight of these lifesavers. The sample standard deviation is 0 0.029154, and it keeps going on your calculator. Don't forget there's a population standard deviation button, but since this is not all sugar-free lifesavers in the world, this is only a sample. We have to use the sample standard deviation, and n equaled 5. So for my test statistic, t equals the sample average, so 0.79, minus the population average, which is 0.8, divided by the sample standard deviation. Now it kept going, but I went ahead and used five digits, which is the suggested minimum number of digits to the right of a decimal. And of course, in this case, I did not need to round that five up. Divided by the square root of five, and I get negative 0.76709, et cetera. And going two digits to the right of the decimal with rounding, negative 0.77. So now I'm ready to find the critical value. So I've got the T table, I've got a two-tailed test. Why is it a two-tailed test? Do you remember? Since we have not equal to, even though the claim is not in the alternate hypothesis, the H1 has got not equal to, and that's what tells us we have a two-tailed test. So that means my answer will have two critical values, which means I'll use plus or minus. Row 4, column 0 0.10, again, two tail, and I find the number 2.132, but since we said we had a two tail test, I take that number and don't change it. I just put plus or minus in front of 2.132. And now I'm ready to decide if I reject or fail to reject H0. So I look at my bell-shaped curve, draw in my critical values, which I always like to write CV, so I don't forget that they are my critical values. Then I shade to their closest edge to give me my critical region. And now I look at my test statistic. So if zero is in the center, negative 0.77 is to the left of that, but not as far left as negative 2.132. So since my test statistic is not in the critical region and it's not beyond my cutoff points, I fail to reject H0. And so based on a claim of H1 and failing to reject H0, my final conclusion reads, there is not sufficient evidence to warrant rejection of the claim that the average weight of a sugar-free Lifesaver candy is 0.8 grams. And again, the parameter being discussed is average, the context is that it's the average weight of sugar-free Lifesaver candies. The claim is that it is equal to, and the value it's equal to is 0.8.